Hello, ladies, and happy Palm Sunday. I got back from church not long ago, and I was just really inspired to worship Jesus today. I personally, a lot of times, I'll worship God the Father for who He is and the names that are given to God the Father in the Bible. And it just occurred to me today, as I was reflecting on Jesus coming into Jerusalem and being worshiped, that I don't take enough time praising Jesus for who he is, for the names that are given to him in the Bible and the roles that he plays. So I found this really great list of 50 names of Jesus, um, 50 names and titles of Jesus. It's from crosswalk.com. And these names and titles are in alphabetical order, all with corresponding scriptures. So I'm going to include this link if you'd like to go to them on your own. But in our prayer time today, I'm just going to take like five minutes. Maybe that's my plan, um, as long as I don't get carried away. And not go through all 50, but just go through some of these names and titles of Jesus just to praise him and worship him on this day. And um, if you would like, I would love some interaction in the comments of the video. If there are names or titles or roles of Jesus that you want to acknowledge and praise him for, type those in um, or type a short prayer praising him or just ones that I have read that have really struck you. I'm not going to read all 50 and I'm not going to go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to kind of go in topical and sort of chronological-ish order. So um, I really would encourage you to go through this in your prayer time sometime this week leading up to Easter. and just praise Jesus for who he is. I um, am really excited to do this. So um, I'm also planning, as I was thinking about praising him today, I'm also planning on jumping on this Friday, on Good Friday, when we celebrate, um, or I should say we remember Jesus' suffering and his death on the cross. And I want to do a time of confession and repentance because I think that's important too. So I'm going to do that on Friday in our group as well. So again, join in to this prayer time. And as you're praying, if something comes to your mind or afterwards, if you want to just add in what name of Jesus or attribute or quality of Jesus do you want to praise today and lift him up for? Or do a whole bunch. You could do 50, 50 more. All right, so let's pray. Jesus, we praise you for being the Word, the Logos, the living Word. In John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, nothing was made without you. You are that living word that has a deeper meaning, logos, than we can really comprehend. There is power in that name. You went out, and through, the, through you, the Father created everything, time, substance, space, everything was created through you. You were with God before the foundations of the earth. And you will remain for all eternity. We praise you for being the word. We praise you, Jesus, for being the author and perfecter of our faith. For being the vessel through which we can become right with God. And fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 2. You are the author of our faith, and you are the perfecter of our faith, Jesus. Because of you, we can keep moving forward in our faith with hope that we are not perfect, but you are bringing us into more and more into the likeness of yourself and into the likeness of your Father, of our Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us hope, for being the author and the perfecter of our faith. You are the bread of life. John 6, 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus, thank you that no matter what emptiness we feel inside of us, no matter what hunger and thirst for more, we have inside of us, 
you can fill it. You can satiate it because you are the bread of life, because you are the well that never runs dry. Jesus, thank you for providing for us, for feeding us spiritually. You are the bridegroom. And Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Matthew 9, 15. Jesus, thank you for being the bridegroom who one day we know will come to be reunited with your church. Jesus, thank you that we can trust that you will come. We pray for the endurance to wait without growing weary, without forsaking our faith, without forgetting about you, without losing heart, without losing hope. We welcome you as our bridegroom. You are our deliverer. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus, you stand before us and our loving but just Father. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is the wrath of God. There's no getting around that. You are our deliverer. You are the blood that we paint on our doorposts that the angel of death would pass us over. You are the red cord that we hang from our windows that would save our families, that would save us from the wrath of God against sinfulness, against godlessness and wickedness. You are the lamb. You are the perfect lamb who was slain. Jesus, we praise you for being our deliverer. You are the good shepherd. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Thank you for leading us, Jesus. Thank you for recognizing that our rebellion and our sin is not because we're horrible. It's because we're lost. Thank you for looking upon us and having pity on us, for having love for us, for seeing past who we look like on the outside and the things that we do and seeing us for who we are in the image that God made us, for seeing our potential, for seeing what we could be, and for being willing to lead us patiently and faithfully in the way that we should go, for laying your life down that we would have an opportunity, a second chance to live for God and to be right with him through nothing that we have done. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. Isaiah 7, 14, she will give birth to a son and we'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus, you give us a tangible, a real picture of what it means to live like God. You suffered so that you could understand our suffering. You suffered so that you could lead us as a servant leader. You stepped down from heaven willingly, lovingly, and allowed yourself to be born as a baby and grow up in a world where there is pain, where there are tears, where there is suffering, where there is loss and death, only to die at the hands of people that you loved, only to be betrayed by your closest friends, only to have backs turned on you, rocks flung at you, to be scourged, to be mocked, to be shamed, to be crucified on a cross. Jesus, we thank you that you are God with us. You are the light of the world. 
John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the light that we can carry in us. In an ever increasingly dark world, our light cannot be touched. Thank you, Jesus, for being that light, for being that beacon of hope. You're the great high priest. Hebrews 4.14, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. You are the only mediator we need, Jesus. Thank you for being the great high priest who mediates between us and God the Father, who intercedes for us, who's our advocate who's prayed for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being our mediator. Thank you that we don't have to go to anyone else but you to gain access to God the Father. You are the Messiah that is the Christ. John 141, we have found the Messiah, the Christ, the promised one. Jesus, thank you that you are the promised one. You are the fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament. You were spoken of in Genesis. You've been spoken of without being named specifically throughout the entire Old Testament. You were, you were prophesied to come. And you came just as you were promised. And you will come again. Jesus, you will come again. Thank you, Jesus, that we can trust in you. That you'll do what you say, that you always have and you always will, that you will not forsake us. You're the mighty one, Isaiah 60, 16. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. You are the one who sets us free. John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus, thank you for being our hope, for being the one who sets us free from the bondage of sin, from slavery to our sinful nature, who gives us that option to walk in freedom, that gives us the option to walk outside of legalism, to walk outside of bondage to the letter of the law and to live free in the spirit of the law, to chase after you with everything that is in us. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for freedom. Let us never take that for granted. Let us never forget. Let us never revert back to legalism or nitpicking the letters of the law or judging others based on the letter of the law. Allow us to just walk in that freedom to love others, to love God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength, to love others like you would love them, to stand firm on your truth, to never be compromising, but always be loving. Thank you, Jesus. You are the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Jesus, you are the hope of eternal life, that we will be one with God, even though these bodies will pass away all too soon. You are the resurrection and the life. You died so that we may die to sin. You raised yourself from the dead on the third day so that we may be raised to life, to newness of life, and that our soul, our spirit will live forever and never have to fear the grave, never have to fear death, but again, that we can live in freedom from that fear. You are the way. John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the one way and that you've made yourself known. You haven't kept it only for a select few. You want your name to be proclaimed from the mountaintops. You want 
to be known to those who don't know you. You want to chase after that lost sheep, to leave the 99 and go after the one who is lost so that there would be great rejoicing in heaven when that one is found and returned safely to your fold. Thank you, Jesus, for being the way and for being an open way to, for inviting all who choose to follow you. You are the true vine, John 15, 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. You are the vine, Jesus. Thank you that we can be connected to you. And that when we're connected to you, that we can grow and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. That we could submit ourselves and be teachable to the Father's pruning. But always know that when we're rooted in you and when we are tended by a loving gardener, that we will be living in the optimal conditions to bear the most abundant, most beautiful, most life-giving fruit. Thank you, Jesus, for being the true vine. You are the king of kings. These will wage war against the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called the chosen and faithful. Revelation 17, 14. Revelation 3, 21. He is the victorious one. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Jesus, you've already been victorious. There's no future victory. It's been done. Signed, sealed, and delivered. The victory is won, and we can stand on that. And we can know that you have already won. Any battles that we have today are just a shadow. They're just noise. You've already overcome. Thank you for that hope. John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, thank you. We praise you for being the Lamb of God who laid himself down to be sacrificed, to take the sins of the world upon himself and be slain so that that sin would die. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Revelation 5.5, 5, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open up the scroll and its seven seals. You are the lion. As the lamb, you exhibited power restrained. But as conqueror, there will be no restraint. There is nothing that could stand between you and victory and leading your people to conquer sin and death and evil. You are worthy to open the scroll and no one else. We praise you for being the lion of Judah. Revelation twenty two thirteen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus, we praise you for being the Alpha and the Omega. You were there in the beginning, before time, before matter, before substance, before anything. And you will be there when this world is passed away and the new has come. You always have been, even though we can't even remotely understand what that means. And you always will be, which is what we can hope and just hinge our faith on that you always will be, and that there is nothing, neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons, or anything in all of this earth that can separate us from the love of the Father and from the power of you, his Son, to hold us in your arms and love us and carry us into the newness of life when we pass from the old world into the next. 
You're the alpha and the omega. You are eternal. You are perfect. And Jesus, we just praise you with everything that is in us today. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. I hope that you were blessed by just being able to take a few minutes and praise Jesus. And if you enjoyed this, um, we would love to have you join us again on Friday. And I'm going to be doing a prayer, confession, and repentance kind of time then. So, like I said, add your comments of how you want to praise Jesus today. Um, or any day. You don't have to be listening on Palm Sunday. It could be any time. Just add on as we just praise Jesus for who he is and just anticipate this holy week with just joy and meditation and stillness. And I hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.